All right, this time is a quick speed shop. I'm still cleaning out my shop. I'm moving things around. I'm hanging up a bunch of memorabilia and signs in my pole barn. I got a quick junkyard adventure we're going to go on, and we're going to finish out by moving this uh, Ford Flathead over here and uh, maybe bust into this and see what it looks like. So that's all coming up right now. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. All right, so I've been cleaning. I've got a big hole here I can work in, I can walk around. I haven't been able to maneuver in here for a while, but I got a lot of things put away. Um, I'm just finishing up, I got some new parts. I got a new parts shelf going. I cleaned off this bench over here, so I got my parts for future projects. I got Mercury parts, I got F-250 parts, Studebaker brake parts working there. I got my fluid film display set up, so I'm like fluid film guy. That's awesome. I'm just trying to get stuff cleaned up here. I'm getting uh, all these engines are going to move over here. This uh, flathead unit, we're going to drag that out, take a look at that. I still haven't worked on the red Jeep yet. That's uh, getting one step closer. I'm trying to get all this stuff put away down here first. So, yeah. Making some progress. Uh, let's go down to the pole barn. I'll show you where I put things away. I hung up some signs. I had a bunch of signs laying down. I had some in the other way. So I've kind of put some mem memorabilia up in there. Let's go and check that out and uh, see how that looks. All right, bam, down to the pole barn. You saw last time I got these Ikea like, Wilson power plant units put away. I got the mercury here. I've been loading up my shelf out back. I got a bracket. I uh, bolted it to the wall so it won't tip over. I'm starting to get stuff organized down there. But over here behind me, check this out. I'm doing a lot of uh, cool memorabilia stuff here. I got some old uh, cabinets. I got a champion cabinet. I got an AC Delco uh, testing cabinet that's going to have some tools in it, like a toolbox. Uh, what do we got up here? I got my. Uh, New York State Inspection Station sign there. I got a 32 uh, commercial, or is it 32 commercial Worthington Grill? I got, I think that's Madden. Um, they're selling Walker mufflers. We got some other cans up there in the windowsill. I got my uh, custom exhaust sign I got a long time ago at an auction. We got a flathead, uh, flathead poster here. It's super cool. So I got the BGR radiator sign, kind of like making my workspace over here good. Over there on the other side where the future wall is going to be, I've got a Napa wire carrier cabinet. So I'm just trying to get my workspace laid out. I'm over here working on the bench, so I'll be able to have this cool cabinet. Get there, be able to put some stuff in there. I've kind of covered up the fuse box. I put an old 55-gallon uh, drum, uh, Sempico can. So I cut the off the side of it. And just kind of make like a, I don't know, kind of a cool back, backdrop, I guess, here to the shop. I'll be hanging some more stuff up over here once I get up the chain falls moved out of the way. Oh, hold on, I forgot up there. I hung up my Jenny light sign, but the, uh, the lamp just blew when the lights came on, so that's not working right now. But other than that, everything's coming out good. So I got all the other cars over here in the background. I still got all the cars here in the background. So I think it's going to look pretty cool in here for... Uh, Workspace. I mean, the shop will be right over here in front of this Kara Wilson unit down here. So this is going to be a cool, uh, cool area I think to work in. Got the Model A hot rod shop truck here. I think I'm going to take this to lunch, even though it's about 28 degrees out. I'll bundle up and take her for a spin. Yeah. So bam. So a little chilly in here, but I'm getting this slowly uh, in shape. And then in the springtime, I can build my walls and build the actual shop in here. But now we're gonna go out. I've been looking for some boogie van parts. I got the 88 Ford Econoline van. If you see now in the driveway, I'm gonna build that in the spring. I wanna make a uh, boogie van, like a 70s boogie van. I wanna backdate it to about 1976, 77 era. So what I'm looking for is the round headlight plastic grill that was in the 75 to 78 Ford Econoline vans. They're super hard to find. Those vans around here are all rotted out. Um, I got a secret junkyard stash. I'm gonna go snoop around. And I think there's a couple of them in there. So I'm going to fire up the truck and we'll go over there and see what I can find in the junkyard. Hopefully I'll be uh, hitting some plastic grill pay dirt and finding some that aren't completely junk. So uh, I'll get in the truck and we'll go to the junkyard. Here we go with van number two right around the corner from the other one. It is a uh, three, it's a half ton panel van. But this one is also rusty. But it has uh, marker lights and the grill has got a break down here right there. I think I'm going to go ahead and pop this guy out and see what we get for parts.
believe that came out easy. I can't believe those screws came out. Oh, uh, you got a bunch of broken tabs on this one. And it's also broken down here. But make a good wall hanger or save it for parts. For one, I'm going to go ahead and get it anyways. Now I want to come over here and look at this core support. See what's different about this. Maybe this balance is pretty hosed. I think all I need is to cut this out and I can graft it into my square headlight core support which is a nice shape and this is all right behind the headlights I mean the adjusters are shot and stuff and you need to find some better headlight buckets but if I could saw this out with a sawzall and just graft this in that might be the hot setup because it looks like this is all welded together all the way around I could cut it through here and cut it cut it off down below or whatever, get it out of here. I don't know if I'm going to do that today or not. I found another van up top with no grill in it that I think has a better surround, so I think I'm going to go try to get that one. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be thinking about this one, leave this one on the thinking list. All right, check this out. I found another one. This one is a big bus, and it's got the rotted hood syndrome, just like the other ones. I got it ripped open. Uh, this grill is got all the bars. It's got a couple cracks in it, but not too bad. And I'm gonna pull her on out. Just a couple of cracks, but that's going to be good to go. All right, check out how awesome this thing is. It's some of these old Dodge boogie vans. Got a tube grill. I see a Dodge Diplomat cop car wheel down there on the front. Fortunately, a tree fell on it, but sunroof, roof rack, big side window, stickers, tree growing through it. Not sure what year it is. 70s. Look at this paneling shag trees it's got everything in it it's a panel van it's a shorty this is what i want back here check these out it's got the teardrops in it how awesome is that i bet the raccoons or somebody's been living in here because look at this it's all ripped apart and nasty Look at that insulation. This guy had this thing tricked right out. Two sunroofs, or two pop-up sunroof and a vent in the back paneling. This thing was tricked right out for a boogie van action. So, oh, there's a sticker on these. Let's see. Yeah. Nasty. Less custom windows. So it looks like I can just unscrew these and they'll come right out. Hopefully on both sides. Awesome. Oh, look at the blue shag on the dash. That's killer. Holy crap, that is awesome. killer look at that I'll go ahead and I'll get the other one out okay I'm back from my junkyard trip and this is what I want to do with this stuff is I want to backdate my boogie van project here and turn it into a 19 uh, 
75 to 78 man by using the the round headlight grill like that so we got one step closer here got the grills so now I need to get the core support piece behind here. I'll probably end up just grafting in this one. Then I got to get the valence panel with the marker lights or the turn signals down here. And uh, or I might leave this and put some turn signals behind the grill back in there. There's room to have them. I might put them back in behind the grill for a little custom look. But definitely going to go back and cut the pieces out so I can get get the headlight buckets in here to go with these grills. So got all three of these here. They all need a little bit of work, but they were worth getting. And over here, this is a window van, but I'm going to take the rear windows out and I'm going to panel over these with uh, sheet metal and turn it back into like a cargo van because I want to have my uh, my storage back here, my hauling back here. I want to be able to have the seats and do like the custom shag in the front and then have storage and hauling back here for when I use this to go to like Hershey and stuff. But when I put the metal panel in here, I still want to have the look of the, the boogie van and I'll probably put some graphics down the side and come up in an angle through like they did back in the day. So now, once I put that in there, I can go ahead and bam, install these bubble windows in here. Have that mint 70s custom buggy van action with the original windows. What were these? Uh, West Custom Windows WCW. So I got original buggy van 70s era correct parts to turn this thing into my uh, custom buggy van. What do you think about that? Bam! I think these grills are all the same from 75 to 78. I'm not an expert yet, but they all look to be painted about the same. Actually, these two are black on the bottom where the brackets are. This one's not, unless it's really faded, which is possible. This could just be faded. Actually, it's got a bunch of paint coming off and it's yellow. So I wonder maybe this could maybe even be a replacement grill. It's made out of different plastic. I'm not sure. It's, I'm sure it's got a Ford part number on it if it is original. So. I'll get in looking at these. I paid a hundred dollars for all this stuff, which you might think is a lot for uh, cracked plastic grills. But guess what? You cannot find this stuff around here in New York State. It's uh, all those vans rotted away a long time ago. Very difficult to find. I've seen on eBay these grills people have just the grill like this for four hundred dollars. So I was happy to get these for twenty-five dollars a piece, and I gave twenty-five for the pair of bubble windows. I think that's also a good price because. That's something that you don't just find laying around in the wild either. Um, a lot of those vans are all gone. Well, most of the vans are gone around here. So I'm happy with everything for 100 bucks. So now i got choices and parts and pieces. I can start building my boogie van. So now we're back on task here. Um, i got the Ford six-cylinder flathead. This is a 40 Ford motor in training I got from my friend Dylan last time. I'm going to try to put that over here with this red... Uh, K.R. Wilson unit it is. This is the junk uh, F head that came out of my one army jeep out back. It's full of water. I'm sure it's locked up, but I want to save it for all the accessories and maybe make a display motor. I think I'll wad that in here too. And then I got a junk uh, Ford flathead four cylinder out of the doodle bug back here. It's got a rotted uh, valves in the head and it's got a broken timing gear. It's pretty much for parts, but it's got clutch and stuff on it. So I'm going to save all that. Eventually I want to get all this stuff out of here, but right now we're going to Rochambeau this thing over here. So I want to turn this thing as a side project just for now. I want to get this set up and ready to put my 37 forward, pop the heads off, shake it out, put new head gaskets in it, clean it all up, and hopefully get it running on this uh, K.R. Wilson stand here. But we're going to ditch the hood and the radiator is, is smashed. I'm going to ditch all that stuff so we can get at the engine work on it. I think it's a Canadian block. It's got a C number on the back of the bell housing, so I think it's a Canadian 221, 85 horse motor, but it'd be fine for my 37 Ford. So I'm gonna get all this crap moved over here and I got some other stuff to put away. All right, here's a little fun Ford flathead fact. You can see the Ford flathead V8 over here in this KR Wilson unit. And uh, this has got industrial exhaust on it, which is a straight log that goes straight up through the top of the unit here. What I got here is factory F40 Ford exhaust, but this has a factory um, optional heater, which runs the exhaust, exhaust through this heat box which has a bunch of finned uh, pieces of sheet metal that grab the heat around the exhaust and then the exhaust goes out the back of the car here but there'd be two flexible hoses that would come off this and go into a heater box inside the 40 Ford so you'd have, uh, have a heater. Um, so this is an option. Most cars came without a heater. 
you had to either use this or you could use an aftermarket water water fed heater but this is a factory 40 ford exhaust manifold heater setup here that came off an engine actually this came off the engine that's in the thomas rocket car if you watch my series on that um we put a 40 ford engine in that just for the display of the car in the in the the museum and this exhaust is on it and the rocket car has custom exhaust that came with, with it so uh, i got this off the engine but I've got another one of these down in the basement. I got off another 44 Deluxe sedan that I bought some parts off of. But you don't see them every day. Usually they, these are rotted out. The sheet metal would rot out from the heat of the exhaust. And so it's uh, they're kind of hard to find now. And uh, so here you go. Here's a 44 factory heater setup on the exhaust manifold. I have to clean up back here. It's all filthy and nasty, and uh, then I can shuffle these other engines over into the spot where this was. All right, bam! Here we go. I got it. Uh, everything all moved around. I put the F head over there, the Model A banger here, the six banger here. I moved my metalworking stand over to where it's more convenient to get here because I need a lot of space to work around in this area for the 40 Mercury, the rear end. Uh, I'm gonna cut the rear suspension out. I cut the rear floor of the car out, and this area will be kind of wide open. I'll have enough room to work around it. This is where I did the Thomas Rocket Car work back in here. Kind of got everything beat back, so it'll be a working working area. So here's the back of the KR Wilson unit here. You got the uh, the drive implement drive one, two, three, four, five, six belt drive here, and then you pull the clutch in. It locks the uh, clutch in. I bet I can turn the motor over. Oh yeah, she's turning over. Let's turn on the engine over there. Yeah. Boom. So this would be to run any type of implement here. Obviously there's not a lot of guardage, so you'd have to watch it. The thing would wrap you right up. But got the controls on the back. Somebody put a different ignition switch in here. Here's a starter button. I actually sold the uh, the contact dropout circuit for a guy that was building another one of these. I got my US gauge, oil pressure gauge, and amp gauge here. But this will make a good run stand for this engine. I was actually talking to a guy on the flat spot on, on Instagram about this, and he cued me into one thing that I didn't realize I should have thought about it, but since this thing's governed to run about 1800 RPM, the camshaft in this industrial application engine is going to top out probably about 1800 RPM, and he also said they got a lower compression ratio. So this would be a poor choice engine for a car because you'd want to run wind the flathead up probably to 32, 3500 RPM, I guess. So... I'm actually not going to put this in the car. I have a 48, 1948-59AB motor that I bought from my friend Chad that came out of his 48 sedan. That runs good. It's got uh, Bob Drake water pumps on it. It's got a uh, uh, Pertronics ignition in the distributor. It came with a side shift tranny. I'm going to put a stick shift tranny on it, or a top loader tranny on it, top shift transmission on it for the car. So. I think we're just going to tinker around with this thing anyways, pull the heads off, take a look at it, and see what the flathead looks like, slap it back together, see if I can get it fired up here on the stand, and then just going to mothball this thing for now. I'll have a running uh, run in industrial motor for, for whatever, and I'll uh, put that 59AB in the 37 Ford instead. But that's going to be later on in the winter, court, towards closer to spring. I'm going to work on the 40, on the, uh, 40 Mercury. So... I'm just going to spin this thing around and pop the hood off and we'll get a closer look at it and then we'll finish up this video. I got the hood off here. I got the hood off here. This thing has been apart before because the governor up here with the fan hooks to is where the generator would mount on a passenger car motor but the generator is mounted down here on these commercial units. Um, this generator, the bracket broke and it put the fan into the radiator here which has ruined this radiator. This is like a 35 to 37 Ford truck radiator. Um, it's got it's actually original Ford deal. It's got the tag on it over there, but the fan ripped into it and wrecked all the cores. So this radiator's got to get a whole new record job on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the radiator out, pull this front um, grill work off of here to expose the front of the engine, 
I think someone's replaced this carburetor. The other units have uh, 94s on them and a 97. This is the 59 carburetor, which I think is a little bit later, like a 46 to 48 Ford carburetor. So somebody's replaced this at some point too, and it's got duct tape on there. Somebody's been into this before, but I want to pull the heads off, get a look at it, see what it looks like. There's some uh, rat poison or something decon down inside here. A mouse must have got inside here at some point. So I'll pop the heads off and take a look at it. So I'm going to use this as a filler project. Probably not going to get into it too much right now because it's getting late. But next time, uh, we're going to bust on into it and see what we got going on here. I got this thing ready to come off here. I took the one hood uh, radius rod or radiator support rod. They thread into a bung on the back of that. This one is loose here. I'm just going to set it free for now because I didn't want this to get carried away. Uh, I bet this is heavy because it is cast iron. Let's see. Up. Oh, that's not too bad. This is very delicate though because it's cast iron. Cannot drop it. Don't drop it. Probably just could take the clutch mechanism right off the back and uh, save that for later and just have this as a run in stand. Well, there we go for now. You can tell this is definitely a truck engine. It's got the 81T uh, cylinder heads on it, which are a 38 truck engine. It's got the dual dual. Uh, it's got the dual pulley water pumps, which are truck truck only. And then the governor here is dual dual pulley. So this had double fan belts on it. So for more uh, industrial application, if you broke one belt, they want to keep they had tandem up. Then they got the generator down here which would have had the fan on it when it was mounted up here in the original location. That just runs off one belt, actually a third belt, a third belt off the crank, which I sold the third crank pulley that was on here. There was a three groove pulley, and a guy that had another one of these that bought the exhaust, the spare exhaust I had, needed that three groove pulley, so I sold that to him along with the exhaust. So uh, you can see here, this is an oil line. This thing is oil fed. Let's see, where is the line? There should be a line hooked up to this, which might be this one, which is loose here. Yeah, this line here should be hooked up into this oil fitting up here, and it lubricates the bearings on this, and then it drains back through this drain line into the oil pan. But this bracket had broken, that's what put this into the fan. So, we've got our stock like 37 Ford passenger car style air cleaner on here. Got the throttle and choke hooked up with this. Like I said before, it's a 59 carburetor, which is from a later model engine. You got your fuel pump, your fuel pump stand here, the plug wires, which go down through this loom. This got a 42 to 44 crab style distributor in here. I should have the big helmet one being 38. And this exhaust here is also special to the KR Wilson unit, this log style exhaust that goes up into a pipe here. But essentially, it is a truck engine. The flywheel, I think, is a little bit different, or maybe the uh, the input bearing for the industrial application back here might be a little bit different. I'm not sure. I'm not a flathead expert, but I looked into it a little bit. I think we're running out of time for this video. Did a whole bunch of things here today, so good progress. More like a vlog-style video today, and uh, hopefully I got something cool coming up next time. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe putting out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Hit the bell for alerts, tell your friends. And we'll see you right back here at the Quick Speed Shop messing around with cool old junk like Ford Flathead V8s.